Next up, we have a local writer, communications consultant, and news junkie. Please welcome Tammy Hutchinson. All right. You can tell a lot about someone by how they cope with a crisis, especially when that crisis is playing out in a 24-hour news cycle and being discussed on blogs and Facebook. Some rise to the challenge like a champ, answer questions like a pro, and coolly brush off any long-term damage, while others flounder in the face of public outrage. If you are in the middle of a public relations crisis, chances are that reporters are going to chase the story. They'll show up at your house, they'll send you emails, they'll call to get more information about what is actually going on. A common instinct when people are in this situation and being asked hard, unpleasant questions is to respond with no comment. But when you say the words, no comment, the audience and the journalists will assume the worst. Those two words are deadly because they imply that you have something to hide. Instead of closing a door to further questions, it paints the door bright red and sticks a sign on it that says, wouldn't you love to know what's actually going on in here? Let's all take a second and just imagine answering day-to-day -day questions you might hear at home with no comment. Do you think these pants still fit? No comment. Do you like the food I cooked? No comment. Do you think my mom's annoying? No comment. You're probably not gonna have the best day if you try this out, but for the sake of science, I suggest you all go home and do it. <laughs> when you respond in this way, everyone assumes that you mean something else. In other words, no comment is really just an attempt at a cover up. Instead of looking innocent, people will assume you either don't know what you're talking about, that you're guilty but afraid to admit it, or that you're just really defensive. A great example of this is Martha Stewart. In 2004, the television personality and chief executive of Martha Stewart Living was charged with nine counts of insider trading. During the media coverage and throughout the entire trial, Martha Stewart refused to comment. She said no comment as she walked past reporters on her way to her house and no comment on her way into the courthouse. So the public filled in their own story. Newspapers were filled with quotes from fans who thought she was guilty. Reporters described her as defiant. And in the weeks before her trial, the share price of Martha Stewart Living dropped from $20 to $9.50. This represented a plunge in her own personal fortune from over $1 billion to about $300 million. Bill Cosby sat down in 2014 to do interviews with several journalists inside the galleries of the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art. He was there to talk about an exhibit based on his personal art collection. His publicist asked reporters to stick to discussing the exhibition, but a video showing Hannibal Burris's stand-up act that focused on Cosby's lingering allegations of sexual assault had recently been making its rounds on the internet. During these interviews, Cosby was asked about the art collection and the exhibition. Then two reporters asked Cosby about the allegations. He shut them down saying, no, no, we don't answer that. There is no response which is really just a long-winded no comment. And the headlines the next day across most major newspapers and TV stations was nothing to do with the art or the exhibition that he discussed, but with the no comment that he provided. A simple no comment is in and of itself a comment. And as the communications world is rapidly changing, responses are becoming increasingly more important. In the world of social media, blogs, and the internet, the only thing worse than saying no comment is saying nothing at all. The things that we might have been able to get away with once don't work in today's fast-paced, information-obsessed social media world. Not speaking for just 20 seconds is really awkward. <laughs> and it makes people generally uncomfortable. So just imagine the damage that can be done to your own reputation if you go hours or even days with no responding to people on your social media. This is especially true if your company does customer service through Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. If people have a question or an issue with your company, an employee, or a product, they're gonna go to social media to get answers. In fact, 67% of consumers go to social media for customer service needs, like Hassan Saeed. His father was flying on British Airways and the airline lost his luggage. 
So he went onto Twitter to ask the British Airways customer service about their lost luggage protocol and to find out what they should do. But the airline failed to respond for nearly 12 hours because the message had been posted outside of its normal business hours. During this time, Saeed was getting progressively more frustrated with the lack of response and decided to pay for a promoted tweet ad on Twitter to let the world know exactly what he was feeling. This tweet was seen by more than 76,000 people, reported on worldwide and retweeted across the globe before British Airways opened again the next day. For a business that operates both day and night across multiple time zones, their failure to grasp the 24-hour uh, nature of social media proved to be disastrous. Not responding can be just as damaging for personal social media. Justine Seiko, a PR executive from London, was about to begin a long vacation in South Africa. As she boarded the plane, she sent out a tweet to her small following of just 170 people. Her tweet read, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, just kidding, I'm white. Her tweet went viral, and she was en route to South, America, or South Africa. She was completely unaware and couldn't respond because she didn't have internet access. Web websites highlighted her account, and Suji had thousands of followers. By the time she touched down in Cape Town 12 hours later, tens of thousands of angry tweets had been sent in response to her joke. The hashtag, has Justine landed yet, started trending, and a parody account, a fake movie poster, and a New York Times article were already online. She also lost her communications job due to the tweet and her lack of response. A lot can happen if you don't respond. The trick in any tough media situation is to always be prepared to say something. Respond quickly, respond honestly, and respond with something. There is always something to say, and it's your opportunity to get your side of the story out to the public.